1212, I go by the name of DJ Wood, and you're now listening to the original Jeek Podcast. Let's go! Ready to make an entrance, so backwards cut. What up, Jeeks? My name is Rockin' Mr. Magic, and he is... Unique DNA. And this is the original Jeek Podcast. Unique DNA, my man, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's going on, man? Uh, a lot, man. It's, it's, it's 2022. Uh, it is 2022. It feels like crazy. it's 2020 part two. <laughs> Right? Like, it's wild, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've been in this, you know, third season of uh, 2022, and it's it's feeling really weird. Yeah, we've officially jumped the shark. <laughs> it's Absolutely. just all downhill from this it's, point. Yeah, it's unfortunately, it's all downhill from here. Absolutely. Um, for those who listen, this is the first time Unique DNA and I have been able to link up and record, unfortunately, since summer. So... He's been a busy man, a successful busy man, which we're very proud of him here for that. Um, and we're hoping that things will be able to open up a little bit more. But in the meantime, we're planning to continue to bring you episode of the Original Jeep Podcast, the first three episodes of season five. We've had some wonderful guests, and we have a couple more guests um, that are scheduled to appear in the next couple episodes. So... If you are in the Jig Nation community on Facebook, you may have seen uh, the boy Matt Walker, a.k.a. Fresh, who will be appearing as a guest uh, upcoming soon. And uh, from Love Thy Nerd and the Free Play podcast will be uh, the lovely Kate Katawaki joining us in the very near future to talk about some very fun topics. So, um whether Unique DNA is here or I'm not here, we're going to keep doing what we can to continue to bring you dope cheek content. So without further ado, Unique DNA, what you what you been watching, what you been doing, <laughs> what you been doing bro? Because it's been a minute and a half. Yeah, man. Um, let's see. I haven't been doing much playing as usual, as per usual. Um, such is life as an adult. Right. Um, I have been. I've been keeping up with my anime mostly. Uh, partially, I can thank Dweller for that. Um, <laughs> so uh, I've been watching Attack on Titan because that's back season four, part two. That's right. It's been crazy from day one. Was episode four now? Um, been crazy. Uh, if you follow it, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you should be. Uh, <laughs> I've been watching, um, you know, I haven't been watching a lot of like regular TV. Okay. It's just been a lot of anime and like YouTube. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's just, just, uh, I just, uh, the homie D Royal put us on of uh, this new show called Link Click. Okay. Um, it's like a time travel kind of genre, um, in anime. It's, it's dope though. Definitely dope. Definitely check it out. Um, yes, yeah, that, that's another crazy anime. It's just crazy dope. Um, Tokyo Revengers, we just started, well, we, well, we just finished that. And, um, what else have I been watching the anime? I feel like I've been watching more. Oh, I finally, took me forever. I finally finished Hunter, Hunter, Hunter uh-huh. X Hunter. Yeah. Um, cause like I got to like the Chimera Ant arc and then I just kind of stopped and, you know that's that, that was it. Um, so that was wild. I, I will be doing a, a daily nerd devo on that. Um, oh. <laughs> thanks to my boy Rocket Mister Magic for the recommendation. Um, nice. Yeah, so that's coming up soon. I Keep an eye out for that. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, 
yeah, I guess that's it. I, uh, I'm watching a lot of YouTube and just keeping up with my skills okay. uh, on the photography side. And uh, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. I did watch something on TV. I can't remember what it was now. Oh, I mean, of course, Encanto. I mean, <laughs> who hasn't watched that? Oh, God. Okay, I'm going to admit, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Uh, you got to watch my it. My kids have played it almost every day. And I, okay, I, should say I haven't seen it. I, I've seen the last half of it. Okay, um, fair enough. So I know, I know the, I got the gist because everybody was talking about it. Right. Um, and then I came into the movie, said it was like halfway through, and the main character was, um, she was putting together the different pieces of, the broken uh, prophecy. Uh, yeah. Before before she found Bruno in the walls and, and all the, the spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Sorry. Spoilers. <laughs> Sorry. I, I said something. Um yeah. So if you didn't see it yet, um this is you know, this is a spoiler warning now. Um my bad. Um <laughs> But I mean come on, you can't go anywhere and not hear the song anyway. So yeah, yeah. And, and, and that song has slap so hard for absolutely no reason oh yeah um, it's it's complete fire just for i mean well i mean it's 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 lin well lin manuel yeah, miranda yeah, so i mean Man- manuel's been he, he's a beast <laughs> he's, 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 <laughs> he's a beast it's just insane um, but i t- i totally intend to see encanto fully and i totally um i want to have some conversations about encanto oh we for, need to for yeah for the other for for the other group that we're in um, because I have a couple of friends who are Colombian and I want to hear from them uh, how they feel. One of them told me that she didn't feel it was very Colombian. So I want to have a conversation with her about why, uh, because it's extremely interesting to me as far as the representation goes yeah. and what, what felt genuine and what didn't feel genuine. So, um, yeah, yeah. And Contra, that's, that's, a, that's a great pick because that has, truly become a cultural phenomenon yeah yeah it's still I, I i actually got the same feeling i mean i'm not colombian but i have a lot of colombian friends i got the same feeling that it wasn't like um it completely genuine to the to the colombians and I, I if i remember correctly like a lot of the um actors and actresses aren't colombian they're latino let's latinos latinas but not necessarily colombian um well, so, I mean, I mean that, it was that, still that, dope. That, that's what Hollywood does. I mean, can you right. remember the last time they had uh, an American uh, black man play anybody in, in the civil rights movie? <laughs> right. movie? It's always right. some British dude. Right. You know, I, I mean, <laughs> or they get had, like... You, 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 the, the, dude, the brother that played Dr. King, British. Um, yeah. Daniel Kaluuya playing... Um, um, uh, playing, uh, Fred Hayden. Chairman, Chairman Fred like, Hayden, yeah, chair, yeah, playing Chairman Fred. Like, come on, man. <laughs> like, you know, e- Idris, you know, like, yeah, 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 that's true. It's always some British brother, like, so yeah, they, they do that all the time, yeah, you know? yeah. Um, oh, that's another one. I was, oh, uh, Wheel of Time, I was watching that, okay, uh, finished that another, up. That's another thing I haven't started yet. Yeah, well, it's, well, I read all the books, so I kind of had a head start. <laughs> so, um, well, I, but, I asked, uh, I asked a, a friend if I should read the books first to watch the show, and he was like, "You can go ahead and watch the show. Don't you don't really need to watch to read the books." But I don't know. Um, it it's it it kind of they kind of did the Game of Thrones thing, so okay. it's not. It, it, it sort of sticks to the books, but not exactly. So, like, you're not, you really won't lose much if you re, if you watch the show first. Okay. Because um, it's not like you'll 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 definitely gain more from the books than mm-hmm. the show. Um, but it's not like major spoiler, at least not right now. I mean, I'm, I imagine a few seasons down, yeah, probably, but right now there's no major spoilers from the book and the show. Um, because most of the stuff, it, it, most of the stuff in, in this season is covered in the first first few chapters of the, of the book, so um, it's not like there's a lot more 
and you're like, it's. I mean, it's 14 books, so. <laughs> yeah. 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 At first, it's I thought it was only a couple books, and they're like, it's 14 book series. I'm like, 14. Yeah. 14. Yeah, it's wild. Oh, okay. Yeah. When I first, yeah. like, when I first got into it, I was like, ah, I don't know if I'm gonna, if I can finish all this, but uh, once you get into it, it's like it's crazy. Like you just can't stop. And then like um, just the just the world building and everything in it in the books is just crazy. And then obviously now to see it live action, it's like oh okay. I, I'm always interested to see how my imagination matches up to live action. <laughs> right. Like how you know how things get rendered in real real life. And uh, they did a pretty good job. Um, what else? Okay. Oh, I finished the Expanse. As yeah. did I. Okay, we finally had yeah. the same thing we watched. Okay. <laughs> um, how did you feel about that? Because my feelings about the Expanse ending are very conflicting. <laughs> As are mine. Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, I love. I mean, I love. I always loved her anyway. She's my favorite character in the whole show. But yeah. Avisarella, I love how she went out. The ending. Um, just the whole thing with that. Um, <sighs> Holden, just typical Holden. <laughs> you know, he he got he got so annoying to me. Like I don't know if it was the predictability of his character. I don't know if it was um, the portrayal. I I just he started to really just like have this like holier than thou annoyance. Yeah, yeah, he definitely, and especially for somebody who made so many mistakes, yes, of his own, yes, and for you to like down on people, you know, on, on their decisions. to be so self righteous, which that kind of, I mean, spoiler alert again, but that frustrated me in the at the end, um, in the final episode when it's like they kind of everybody kind of like put all stock into him. And oh yeah, like, when the, and the, yeah, but then we pulled the wool over everybody's eyes. Yeah, 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 and I was just like, why? Wow. Like this guy is like he's. <laughs> yeah, I get why he did it. Like I understood the reasoning, but yeah, that was that was something else. Yeah. Um, but but that's, I felt like that's typical him. Like he he didn't want to be involved anyway. Right. And that was his way to make it right in his eyes, as well as um, escape the responsibility. Right, and that's like I mean, like I said, it's typical holding like all, you know. Through the entire series, he's always trying to shir- shirk responsibility. He didn't want to yeah. be the captain. He is like yeah. the most altruistic <laughs> dude who does not want responsibility. <laughs> like he, he, he did not want to be the captain. And you but know. He, but he all but he had this thing of like he has this savior complex, but he right. doesn't want to be responsible at the same time. Like exactly. bro, if you're gonna have a savior complex, you've got to take the responsibility. Right, you gotta own it. Yes. And uh, yeah, so that was frustrating. Um, I felt like the whole Marco was uh, ending was a it was a pretty weak payoff, in my my opinion. <laughs> so say we all. <laughs> that was the worst big bad death scene I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Absolutely zero climax to that it, it i was, was like it and then was, I, yeah it was garbage because <laughs> then i was thinking like is he even do they even know if he's really dead yeah like they just because i mean they, the, the ships just disappear we don't the know ships what just disappear to them. we don't know what happens to them so we assume they just went through the ring and they just instead of being blue it turned red and then they never came back okay right. they never came back that don't mean anything right. they could have just went to another dimension for all we know right um <laughs> back in time like who who right. knows yeah, you could be amassing a new army like in this other world somewhere like yeah i, I was just like eh, was, that was really just kind of yeah i i um, tell you this i i'll tell you how i wanted to see marco die and not and not have it be philip kill him like that would have been too predictable right. i wanted the the hot blonde the second in command i wanted her to take him out mm. because she, because he, because she was keep, she kept on correcting him about mm-hmm. him making everything too personal, mm-hmm. and she's doing it for the cause and for the belt, right. 
And I would have loved it if she was like being the one, like, you know what? This is too personal for you. It's yeah. a wrap. Like, I'm, I'm taking, taking over. over. Yeah. yeah. That would have been dope. That would have been good. Um, even her death was kind of like, that was. It sucked, man. Like, yeah. she, you know, the ship gets shot and she's, I hear she's, she bleeds out. She was too well, thorough to go out like that. Yeah. Like, and then I was like, okay, cool. Like when after it happened, I was like, "All right, so then this this they're gonna use this to like to you know shift Philip because he was already he was teeter tottering anyway. He was teetering, but but her breaking. I think it was because they had her go from this tough exterior to all of a sudden she's soft and like she's crying. She's like, "I don't want to go," right. and then then he's like, "I don't want to go either. Right. I need to go, so I don't <laughs> go." Right. So like I thought I was like okay this is they're gonna use this to shift him completely because he was already on that you know he had already pretty much made up his mind and um yeah it just didn't turn out that way and I was like so it's like okay he's going down with the ship and his dad and and this you know it's not even a blaze of glory just <laughs> just yeah, random like just, anomaly just, just undigitized. Yeah, them. like <laughs> I, I don't, I can't even describe it. It was just so anticlimactic. It's such, and especially, and it happened so early in the episode. So it's like, you know, I know we're not going to get another big fight scene. They just showed that, right? But I'm expecting something. I'm expecting a battle of wits. I'm expecting something to happen, and not just he flies through the ring and disappears in the red lines. Mm-hmm. Like ugh, that, yeah. I can't, I can't. That just that had me so heated. I can't, I can't talk. Let's let me let me talk about something I did enjoy because I if I start talking, about it, I'm, not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna stop. Um, I've been I haven't been playing as much, but I have been still playing Destiny, of course. Um, I've been playing more Division Two. For some reason, I started playing that. Played some with your cousin. Yeah, I heard. Um, yeah, D Square told me. Uh, I spoke yeah. to him yesterday. And he told me. Okay. He's like, yeah, you know, he's playing Division Two, and I was like, what? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't have been able to play anyway, but I was a little jealous. <laughs> uh, yeah, we we missed you. You know, of course, I I mentioned it to Tim so I could yell at him again for telling us to down to buy the game, and then he stopped playing it. Yeah, right? we bought it. <laughs> um, so I'm playing some more Division Two. Um, watching, I obviously the Expanse. Um, I. I had gone to the movies to see Spider-Man. Nice. Um, I had watched Matrix 4 on HBO Max. Um, I've been watching. I, I binged all of Raising Dion season two today. Uh, I need to watch that, but I can't watch it without the wife. <laughs> I, I understand. Um, I'll just tell you that season two, uh, better than season one. That's good. That's good. I'm glad That's to hear that. Season one. Um, Cause I had the comic books like before anybody even knew it existed. Um, yeah, it was it was it was so under the radar in yeah. the book form. Yeah, and uh, I, I gotta find that somewhere. I gave it to my wife because at one point she took it to school for the kids to you know read during their fun time or whatever. But um, okay. I don't know if she ever brought it back. Oh, well, <laughs> that now, right? Because I don't even think you can get them anymore. I don't think so either. It's it's a hard find. Yeah. Uh, but definitely, definitely make sure y'all take the time to cuddle and watch that because it's 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 good. Um, I've been watching Archive eighty one. Okay. Also on Netflix. I gotta catch up on that. Which I heard um, is good though. Well, you know me, like I'm not into horror stuff, but um, you know, it was one of those things that the wife was watching, and she was like, "I want to watch this with you," and I'm like, oh, "Okay." Um, <laughs> so. I kept watching it after she fell asleep, and uh, yeah, you know, no, you know, got, 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 got to support the black lead. So I kept watching it, even though I'm not into horror, or whatever. And it's it's interesting. It's definitely more. It's, it's more thriller than horror. It's, it's more thriller than horror, but it has, you know, demonic influences, so they keep it within the horror range. But it's not like gruesome horror. Um, yeah, I don't mind the gruesome horror. I hate jump scares. That's the only thing I hate in horror. I can deal with everything else. <laughs> they haven't had many jump scares. Um, so I think you'll be all right with that. 
I just feel like they're so unnecessary. <laughs> no, so... that's half of the genre is jump scares. Come on. I know, I know. Just because I just feel you like... fall for them doesn't mean that. You know, I've gotten scares. much better at recognizing when they're coming. <laughs> so it doesn't bother me as much yeah, anymore. I mean, that, but... That's half of it is just knowing, <laughs> predicting when the jump scare is going to come. Seeing the jump, seeing it, it's, it's, like, when, it's like when we were playing ball and we're, we're, studying our defender we know when he's going to go for the shot fake right it's just no one when right. no one when they're going to shot fake with, with the jump skate you get this is prediction yeah. yeah um but archive 81 has been has definitely been a very interesting psychological or uh it's good and um it's actually on pause on my tv right now um <laughs> and i've also been watching dances with banthas um ah. forward slash gangs of Tatooine, which <laughs> um <laughs> has been horrible, least slow, um, and boring until the last two episodes, which I don't even count because those two episodes are 95% The Mandalorian Season 3, and you've barely seen Boba Fett in those last two episodes. So yeah. Book of Boba Fett has been boring and slow, and I'm very disappointed and Filoni and and Favreau for making such four boring slow episodes. Um, yeah, they were boring. You know, I uh, I haven't watched it, and I think that's partly because Mandalorian was so boring and slow for me. The second season was it the second season? Yeah. Um, other than when, um, of course, when Ahsoka showed up and that part of it. Yeah, that but, was season two. Yeah. Yeah, but uh. There was so much of that season that I was just like, this is boring. <laughs> yeah, if Mandalorian is slow to you, Boba Fett is, you know, a, a, a moonwalking snail. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. I've heard that multiple times. So I'm not really in the rush to see snail? it. I thought I just made that up. <laughs> well, not not in that exact word, but <laughs> those exact words. But I've heard that it's boring and slow. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'll probably just wait till it's all done and then i'll just binge it because then at least i can kind of like just get through it you know just power through it versus like every week putting myself through this torture (laughs) and and, and torture it definitely starts as so we'll we'll see how it continues uh now that we've got back-to-back good episodes but you know i want to see how good it stays when the story eventually goes back to boba fett and his Gangs of Tatooine storyline, which <laughs> I, I mean, it, I, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's just, oh, I'm just, I'm so disappointed. I, I, I am just so disappointed. Um, yeah, it's it's sad. Um, I do want to say to anyone who also saw Matrix Four like I did, um, if you watched Matrix Four as a remin to, to reminisce about the original trilogy um, or you watched it to, cause you wanted to see more bullet time action. Then I understand why you're disappointed. And you went to a matrix movie when you wanted, to, what you really wanted to see was another John wick movie with sci-fi elements. <laughs> the matrix story has always been about more than the visual effects. Um, it's a good Matrix story. If you're into the Matrix lore and you have watching the Matrix and you've read the comics, you'll have a deeper appreciation for Matrix 4. Um, it's not a perfect movie in any way, shape, form, or fashion, but uh, some of the complaints that I heard I uh, just from people who don't understand what the Matrix is as a story. And yeah, it's all nostalgia. You know, and if you went for nostalgia, then you don't understand that they're continuing story. Like, uh, unlike so many um, delayed sequels, this one is actually continuing the story. It wasn't going after a nostalgia payday. This one is telling you an extension of the story that they started 20 years ago. More than 20 years ago. We're talking about 1999. So more than 20 years ago. Yeah. Oh, Lord. 1999. 1999, man. (laughs) <laughs> that's like what somebody said 1990 was 30 years ago it just <laughs> and i was like <sighs> yeah i don't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't and, and well, then actually that's but that that was 
two years ago, and now that 1992 is 30 years ago, and I, I don't. Yeah, know yeah, which is also crazy because yeah, kids that were born in 2000 are now 22 years old. Right. Let that sink in. I don't want to let that sink in. <laughs> I don't. Not even a little bit. Like those kids to me are going to be forever babies. They shouldn't be able to vote. Um, they feel like. <laughs> Jesus, it's a good way to <laughs> children. They should, they're not adults. <laughs> I can't. I can't, you can't vote. It. You can't drink. You can't drive. Just go you can't. Do, yeah, just just be the little children that you are. You know, get off my lawn. That's right. <laughs> go, go to the park. <laughs> oh snap! Well, that's what we've been watching or playing. Um, we want to hear about what you've been watching, and remember we. Try to keep spoilers out for brand new things in the Geek Nation Facebook community. We do have a Discord with a spoiler zone where you are free to throw spoilers into, which I have so done because sometimes I can't keep a lid on it. Um, so if you're cool with spoilers, check out Geek Nation's Discord and definitely join our Facebook community, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Geek Nation. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So quick, some quick topics here. First, after 56 years, Sega is exiting the arcade business. No more Sega coin op or digital op arcade games. What is this end of an era in unique DNA? So much for this. Um yeah, I'm just I'm I'm I mean, I knew it was coming. I can I knew it was coming cuz they, they you know, they start, like they haven't really made any new arcade properties. They've been out of the console game for years since True. since the Dreamcast. Um which also coincidentally is about what 20 something years old. Um yeah, it dropped it, no, it's over. It dropped in the 90s. It was 90 yeah, 90 I forgot. Well, it actually wasn't in 99 or 98. It was either 98 or 99. I don't remember yeah. exactly which year, but it was one of those. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, it's, 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 I mean, I grew up with Sega. That was my, I had the choice between a Sega or a Super Nintendo, and I got a Sega. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, man, that thing was, that was life, you know, Sonic. Of course. Of course. Uh, NBA Jam, TE. Tournament edition, <laughs> baby. Yo, I had TE on my game gear. I didn't have it on the Sega, but I had it on the Sega game gear. And I I played the main <laughs> game, man. Yeah, I had the game gear. Lion King, that was impossible to beat. Um, That's the Lion <laughs> all, all versions of it are impossible to beat. Are you kidding me? Oh. Um. Yeah, man. Sega, Sega stampede is, scene, man. That oh, took me forever. Uh, don't remind me. Uh, Echo the Dolphin. I mean, I can go on for for days. Um, Underrated, great game. Echo the yeah, Dolphin. Echo, Echo the Dolphin was great. It was essentially um, Flipper, but <laughs> but cool, people. like Flipper with but it was like powers, man. Yeah, it was cool. like Flipper, but like he was cool. He got like yeah. superpowers, and he could, like he told me about echolocation and exactly stuff. like you were learning. <laughs> I was learning. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Sega was a big part of my childhood and even the adulthood. I mean, you know, in the arcade world, so many games are, are Sega, right? And that iconic Sega. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sega. Um, I, I'm going to have to start using that. I'm going to have to get a sound for that. We're yeah, gonna have to start using that on yeah we need that. We need that in some, son- some sonic sound effects. Um, yes. But uh, yeah, I, I it's, it's I mean it's as big in my life as as Nintendo, you know, and Mario, and I mean I would probably put them on equal playing fields at this point. And, really? Um, yeah, because I mean you got to remember, like I was okay, I was born in '86, so you got to remember when I started playing games. I mean I did have a I had a Commodore 64 and I had a Atari, but like that was they were really technically my parents' games, and I just you know. Cause I was True. like four or five. Um, so like my first real console that I can remember outside of the, outside of the regular NES, the original 
is Sega Genesis. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. you know, and once I got Sega Genesis, like, I didn't really play the NES that much. It was Sega Genesis all the way up until I got my PlayStation. And even then, I was still playing. You know, I still go back and play when I want to play Sonic or whatever. Yeah. Still go back and play the, the Genesis. And then, like I said, I had the Game Gear. Um, like, we had the choice between if you wanted a Game Boy or a Game Gear. And my brother got the Game Boy. I got a Game Gear. So, like, you know, Sega was big for me. Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely up there. Until they, they started, like, eating through batteries like crazy. And I was like, I want a well, Game Boy. They required six. <laughs> Not that, the game Boy, not that the Game Boy was any better with the way it ate four batteries, but that but six batteries was, was something different because as a kid, you could have you could spend six bucks and get a, a four pack of double A's, but you ain't have the twelve dollars to get you know an eight pack of double right. A's. You get an eight pack and you're like, what am I going to do with these do other these two? So then you two. had to get the twelve pack, and the twelve pack was like. <laughs> almost twenty dollars. <laughs> I wasn't that lucky. So when my man were low, I would just take two of the bad six out and oh yeah, be oh a, I'll, be I'll swap them for, all the time. Yeah, be able to play for another like That's, two hours. <laughs> listen, the family living room remote control got a lot of rotation batteries. Okay, <laughs> absolutely. It didn't need that much juice anyway. Exactly. Um, <laughs> all we're doing is click, click, click. It don't need no right. two double A's for that. What are right. you talking right. about? So, oh, yeah, take these 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 drained ones. That'll last you a couple months. Yeah. Um <laughs> and then when that didn't, you know, then we ran out of those, you throw them in the freezer for a couple yes, hours. I was about to say that you throw them <laughs> in the freezer. <laughs> uh, but um, but yeah, man, uh, I mean that was but that was the thing though, like you those six batteries will last you about four hours. <laughs> like I mean, at least in the Game Boy, like you get a couple days, you might get three, four days, depending on how much you play. But I, here, here's my unique situation with the Game Gear at first, because I could not afford the batteries. So when I played Game Gear, most of the time I played it was in the car, because when my parents got it for me, they got me um, like this bundle. So it had. Oh, uh, you had the car. Um, you had the car adapter. I had the car adapter and I I'm had jealous. this um, magnifying glass that I could screw um, onto the back. So it made the screen like bigger. And then I had the car adapter. It had a carrying case, and I could put all in. And it had some slots for, uh, for my games, which were NBA Jam Tournament Edition, um, Sonic Two, um, Batman, and uh, it was a baseball one. I forget which year. Um, and those were the four games I had in, in my Game Gear case um, that I still have somewhere in my storage unit. Um, but I could only really play on longer drives. Yeah. So I was like, where are we going? Are we going somewhere? <laughs> Cause I'm trying to play some tournament edition. I have my right. piece of paper on my lap with my, with my <laughs> NBA jam TE codes. And I'm, I'm entering in for all, all the different characters yeah, and yeah. for, um, for, uh, always on fire and full court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, always on fire. <laughs> I, I was about always on fire, full court dunks. Those were the two I could get in before the time ran out, and I will be playing with the with the um, I will play with the Pistons after I unlocked. Um, so for those who never played TE, when you first get it, there's all there's the teams with the with the regular teams, and then there is a section for rookies, and the rookies were by themselves. Once yeah. you beat the game, then those rookies were dispersed onto their the teams that they played for. Right. So once I beat the game, which I forget who I used, I think I used, I want to say I used the Spurs because they had Rodman and, and the Admiral and Sean Elliott, and they were like a really mm -hmm. strong team. Um, but after that, then I went to my Pistons because I would have Grant Hill, um, mm -hmm. Terry Mills with the three ball. And <laughs> uh, I forget who the third one, it didn't matter because I was rocking with G Hill. And, um, and that's who I use for them. I'm this full court dunks with Grant Hill, always on fire, busting half court threes. Oh man, it was dope, man. That, that yeah. game was so great. So many hours in the car yeah. spent playing some TE. Yeah. See, I didn't have I didn't I didn't have that luxury. It was just batteries for me. Um <laughs> at least you and got then, to play out, outside of the car though. Yeah, and then like there was a point where I realized that like it was like six six volt 
like you know the DC plug. Yes. And I was like, wait a minute. And I remember going around the house looking at all the transformers and looking at the little output, <laughs> trying to see if it was six volt and if we could, if I if the plug fit. <laughs> I bought one of those universal adapters. It's got like 12 different. Oh, numbers. yeah. I remember those. And, then, yeah. and, the, and the switch to figure out what voltage it was. <laughs> I, spent, I don't know how much time I spent trying to get that thing to work. I never got it to work. Yeah, I tried. We had that, too. And I couldn't, I couldn't get it to work either. I don't know what it was about the, the adapter. And, and I could charge every. I could charge a vacuum cleaner. I could charge everything but my game gear. Yeah. I was like, are yeah. you kidding me? I can't get power to this thing. Yeah, they somehow cornered the market on that adapter. Um, yeah, they were they were doing the Apple proprietary power before Apple was. Yeah, yeah, they, they yeah, they were, that was the lightning port before the lightning port. <laughs> 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 but it fooled you because it looked like a regular DC port. Yes, it sure did. But then either the what you got was too big or too small, yep. and yeah, that yeah that yep. that had me heated. Yeah, so uh, I I don't think I ever did find an adapter that fit. And the ones that did fit were either too much power, and so it still wouldn't turn on, or yeah. not enough. And so, um, yeah, yeah. But I said, you know, that's the, that was my childhood, man, for years. Like I said, up until I, until PlayStation dropped, um, and even then, I still kept it going for a few more years. But um, yes, yeah, it's, no, no, it's sad to makes, see it go. It is sad to see it go, like. Because it's just sad to see the arcade world go, unfortunately. Yeah, um, yeah but unfortunately, it's like nobody, you know, like unless you, like there's a few, like we have one around here. It's called Retrocades. And, um, yeah, I've heard of Retrocades. Yeah. 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 There's, there's a few, it's a franchise here around this, this area anyway, the tri state area. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's like unless you're in that, like they're, and they're, they're basically playing on the nostalgia market. Oh yeah, um, it's it's all it's all nostalgic. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like unless you're playing in that market, you're not even really getting, you know. But th- that market has to be doing something because um Arcade One Up is charging five hundred dollars for their at home mini versions. And I'm like, like they I saw the Simpsons one and I'm like, hold up, they want five hundred dollars for this? I'm like, a year or two ago they were charging two hundred dollars for this for these yeah. things and i'm like is it that really that popular like come on like this your little f- four foot mini version is not worth 500 i can spend yeah. 500 and get the real one yeah well i think i mean covid man covid drove everything all the prices up I guess. all the at home stuff because oh, i mean especially like you think about an arcade it's like that's a COVID nightmare. <laughs> that's true. Like there's no such thing as six feet of space. There's no such thing as six shoulder, feet of space. Up, up, Nobody man. like I mean, we you, you who's really you know wiping down the, the controls after every use? Facts. Like this, yeah. this like so. I don't even know if I'm. I'm thinking now. I'm like I don't even know if retro case is still open <laughs> at this point. Like because after two years of, of this. Three years, yeah. You know, going to you know, we're into year three. Like, yeah, that's a good point. I didn't. So I think a lot of people were like, kind of, you know, leaning on that market. Like, you know, you know what? I'm just get one at home. Um, and so of course that drove the price up. Like, I I got a friend. He uh he basically built like a he's well he's still working on it, but he's basically like building an arcade in his he's building, basement. He's building a meme. Yeah, that's, yeah um, I would love to do that. I just don't have. The skill set or knowledge, <laughs> right? So, or even the space. I don't even have space to put one in my basement. <laughs> yeah, made. yeah, they are. But um, you know, because for him, it's like, yo, I can, you know, I got it all right here, right at home. I mean, that I'm honestly like, if I would do that, like I've wanted, I wanted one for years because I don't have the space for the upright. I have wanted to get a custom made, um main cocktail table cabinet for the house uh, okay you can have your both sides to sit on um, right you can still use it as a functionally as a table right. and you can play your games in it and you're not taking up a ton of space with this massive bulky machine you know that has two to four players on it you know gotta have four players street fighter <laughs> 
Well, well Street Fighter is a two pl- is is two players, but if you're gonna have four players, then you need to have the Simpsons on there, and you need to have the Simpsons, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage on Mutant there, and Turtles, and you need to have X Men on there. X Men, and X Men honestly isn't isn't played right unless it's the six person version, which that's just way too much space. Yeah, in the house and Tekken Tag, you gotta have Tekken Tag on there. Tekken Tag, you had your four players for Tekken Tag, yeah. Yeah, Tekken Tag was really good. Tekken Tag great, was great. That was a great arcade. That was really good. I forgot about Tekken Tag. Tekken Tag is my favorite. Uh, or well, one of them, anyway. Uh, the other one was Time Crisis. I was about to say and... Time Crisis. <laughs> Yo, I, I, I sucked at that game. I don't understand why everybody went really? Time Crisis. I was terrible at it. Oh, I man. Was I was so amazing at Time Crisis. I'm still was... amazing at Time Crisis. I just I played was... it not too long ago. I was horrible. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it was. I was just bad at it, but everybody like, played it. It was so expensive. It was like a it always was expensive. Yeah, always. And like I'm like I can put a quarter here. I gotta put a dollar in time crisis. Okay, time crisis. Let's do this. Um, I was just bad at it. I could never get past like the third stage. I was I, I don't know. And it's not like I couldn't shoot in other shooting games. Like I was nice at the other ones. I just. Time Crisis did not like me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but it's such a great game. Such a fun game. Man, oh, I miss me some Time Crisis. Yeah, Time oh. Crisis. Uh, well, time thank crisis you, Sega, for 56 years yes. of arcade memories and, and greatness. Uh, you, mul- multiple generations, Gen X, end of the boomers, Gen X, um, early millennials, and probably... Um, very, very early Gen Z got to experience some of the joy of the arcade boom. And what I will say is it's kind of weird timing, especially with the the Sonic Two. Like the Sonic movie did well, the Sonic Two movies do probably gonna probably do, well. do well. Um, especially now they got Tails and Knuckles in there. Uh, who knows who else? But see, that's gonna. I would think that would drive people more to retro consoles than it would be to the arcade, because Sonic is a console property. True, but I'm just thinking from. I mean, I guess. Well, they do, yeah, I don't know, because they. I mean, they do have the 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 Sega Genesis, uh, um, the classic. You know the, the I can't remember the name of it. Class, yeah, it was like, leader. Yeah. On on Switch, yeah, you got the emulator on Switch, and you got the got emulator so many, Switch, and then so you've got so many Sega games you can buy on Nintendo now. Uh, yeah, and, and then they got the classic of, um, console that they came out with, like the Nintendo one. Oh yeah, the, it's got the like Genesis fifty games Mini. on it or yeah. whatever. Yeah, 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 that's it, the Genesis Mini. I couldn't remember the name of it. Um, so yeah, I guess I guess that would more people would go after that than the arcade because uh, I mean I guess that's the hard part too. There's not a lot of arcades in general. Yeah. There's not. And unfortunately, the gaming community is not geared towards in-person communal gaming, and it hasn't been for a while. And I'm hoping that changes. I would desire for that to change. Um, yeah. It's not going to lie. I missed, I missed the split screen. <laughs> yes. I missed the split screen, split screen communal part of gaming. That was one, as, as great as the graphics are for a Destiny or a Call of Duty or an Apex, um, I miss the four dudes on a couch split screen on Goldeneye. Like, yeah, Golden. that there was something super special about that. Even the split screen on Rainbow Six on, um, was it PS3? At least that had a split screen where you could at least. Um, Man, they had it on PS2 too, but a lot yeah. of people didn't have the multi tap. But, uh, but yeah, but, Rainbow, but Rainbow Six Vegas one and two, I think, were both split screen. Like that was a, still a cool experience. Having the split screen means something. But that four player, you know, every man for himself, PvP. Don't look was, at my screen. Just trying to yeah, figure out where I am. Like, exactly. <laughs> and even if you were looking at someone's screen, it was hard for them to figure out where you were. Yeah. You know? And and you really didn't have time to look at somebody else's screen unless you were just really great with your reaction and you recognized what corner they were in and you try to head over there, and by the time you did that, you ran by someone else not looking, and they shot you in the head. Like, right. you know, it was it was just something. It was great. That that needs to that needs to come back. Like, 
I can, if somebody brought back a four player split screen option, especially with how big the TVs are today, like <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> there's no reason we were doing that on 24 inch TVs, right? You know, <laughs> like you tell me, <laughs> these 65 inch TVs can't can't support a freaking four player script split screen. Come on. Well, after that adorable interruption from you, <laughs> son, um, next topic we've got here for today, Jerry Conway, uh, creator of Marvel's Punisher, a.k.a. Frank Castle. He would like the next character to take on the mantle of the Punisher to be a black character. What do you think of the possibility of a black Punisher? I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it either. Elaborate like it. for me, please, because I don't um, it. So I got we've we've discussed palette swapping ad nauseum at this point. Um, True, but this would not be a palette swap. This would not be a black Frank Castle. This would be a different character under the mantle of the Punisher. Uh, I still don't like it, but uh, okay, it's All like right. semantics. <laughs> Because people are still going to be like, yeah, it's the Punisher. It might as well be the same thing. Might as well be a palace lot. Um, yeah, I mean, at this point, like, number one, I just feel like, you know, create new characters. Like, let them take on their own mantles, their own name, own persona. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be another. Because then he's just the black Punisher, right? It's like, uh, <laughs> it's like when uh, in... Um, Falcon and Winter Soldier, and he's like, "Hey, you're the Black Captain America," and he's like, "No, no," he's like, "You're the Black Falcon." You're, you're the Black Falcon, yeah. And he's like, oh, "I'm just Falcon. <laughs> like, why can't I just be Falcon?" And when my um, daddy said, "You're Black Falcon," like, you're right? <laughs> so it's like, you know, he's just gonna be the Black Punisher. Like, even if even if he has his own persona and everything, he'll always be a Black Punisher. So that's number one. Um, number two, and today's political climate uh uh angry black man with a lot of guns <laughs> that's the anti-hero uh doesn't necessarily fit well uh it fits the stereotype more than the um the reality i guess i would say um, no, you're absolutely right and not even forget today's cl- uh, political climate any political climate yeah, 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 yeah. In like, general, but I 20, mean, ten years ago, twenty years ago, thirty years ago, forty years ago, the the angry black man with a lot of guns shooting up, and, and let's let's be honest, um, most of Frank, up. most right. of Frank Castle's victims are white people, so shooting up a whole right. bunch of bunch bunch of white criminals is definitely not the the optics that's going to do anything or you know make anything better. Right. Um, there's, and, there's nothing progressive about this at all. <laughs> it, this is not even a good idea. And, and and Conway's out here talking about how, look, so look, Conway's upset because of how, you know, the police and white supremacist groups have co-opted the Punisher logo. So he thinks by having a black, a new black character take the mantle of the Punisher will make the, his creation something he can be proud of again. That's, that's just going to take your creation and turn it into something that those same groups are going to use to to do the opposite. They're going to continue to push the narrative that they're pushing. They're just going to push it differently because now the um, black people are excessively violent trope right. is going right. to be what's on the pages, and they're going to use that to their to their ends as well. Like that that's right. not going to help anything. Right. So uh, yeah, uh, overall, I don't like it. Cool. I don't like it. Um, let's go on to something else I don't like. The Los Angeles Lakers. Um, one, I don't like how they're playing. They're playing terrible, but oh, I'm not yeah. Laker fan, so whatever. Um, but they're doing something worse than all the on than all the bricks that Russell Westbrook is throwing up. Um, <laughs> the Lakers have revoked the lifetime season tickets that were promised to Jerry West by the late Dr. Buss. What 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 is the Lakers organization thinking? Probably the same thing they were thinking when they signed all these uh the cast of red 
<laughs> four. Um, <laughs> um, oh man! Uh, like, I mean, this is this is Jerry West, who's responsible for not only winning a championship as a player, he's responsible for putting together the three peat team that of Shaq and Kobe. Um, yeah. He's he was responsible for the the back to back championships with Kobe and Powell and putting that team together. Like a great number of your championships post the Celtics dominance of the sixties and to the, into the seventies, you have, um, and he was the executive during the Showtime Lakers. Right. So one, five, eight, ten, ten 10, championships to of your franchises. 17 are directly related to Jerry West. And you're going right. to, to take his his season tickets? Yep. <laughs> like, I, I... What? Why, because he's working for somebody else now? Who cares? <laughs> like, y'all didn't do enough to keep him. Y'all didn't want to keep him. So, like, right. what is the big deal? Yeah. I, I, all around is just bad. They're just making some bad this decisions over there in Lakerland. Yeah, I, I thought Jeannie would like not allow anything like that to happen. Like, she seems to be the only one that has like her head on her shoulders. Um, but like, this is like, the late Doctor Bus promised it. The man's responsible for bringing you ten championships. The the, the man not, should not have season. First of all, he shouldn't have season tickets for life. He should be in the owner's box with the owners for every <laughs> game for life. Like, are you right. kidding me? Every luxury afforded to him should be given to him because over 50% of your championships are directly tied to that man. He should yeah. get a standing ovation every time he visits the, the what is it now, the crypto.com arena or whatever it's called now. I don't yeah. know. Um, but every time he's there, I don't care what team he's working for, he should be acknowledged and, and have a, a freaking staying ovation for. That's Jerry freaking. That's the freaking logo of the league. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, how disrespectful can you be? Like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I just, it, it boggles my mind that someone can that be that disrespectful to a Laker legend, a league legend who has done so much for that franchise. It just. Yeah, and I gotta, I gotta wonder, like, how much is are these tickets really costing them? <laughs> Not that much. I mean, they go sell sure. to some other rich people, you know. Right. But you, come on, I tell you that whoever would buy those season tickets that they're not giving away for that, that, that those people can't buy you ten championships that he brought you. Right. Exactly. You know? Like, come on, I. I just, uh, or the notoriety that got you to be able to charge that much for those tickets. A freak for that movie, matter. Yes. Um, Come on. Yeah, I think this is this is just a dumb. I mean, they just they just been making a lot of dumb decisions. They're they're about as bad as the Lions when it comes to team management. <laughs> at this point. Right now, I mean, they have more talent than we do. It's old talent, but I mean, I told you it. the the cast are ready for. Um, <laughs> I mean that that was old talent, you know. Bruce Morgan Freeman, yeah, that's old talent, you know. <laughs> I can't with you. Oh, okay. Um, speaking of our Lions, um, let's talk Super Bowl here. We've got the Rams and the Bengals. Two weeks, we'll be seeing them in the Super Bowl. Who do you got? It's, it's tough for me. Um. I kind of want I I I kind of want to see the Bengals take it, but after our little discussion on Sunday, I, I do kind of want to see I want to see number nine get his get his his, his deserved. Uh, it's it's absolutely deserved. You, I mean, yeah. so it's if, not his so fault. The, the offline conversation we were having is unique DNA. Uh, if you're not familiar, um, and you shouldn't, since you listen to the show. We're both Detroit Lions fans, and we have wallowed in the misery of being Lions fans for many, many years and yes, watching poor Matt have. Stafford 
um, be surrounded by either not enough talent, some talent, but bad coaching and management and ownership, and pretty much bad ownership the entire time because the Fords are terrible owners. Yeah. Um, and they're not dedicated to winning. They're dedicated to making money, which is what the Fords have always done throughout their business livelihoods. I mean, Henry Ford is the man responsible for the five day work week. Um, don't, and don't just quote me on that. Look it up. That's a fact. He's the reason why there's a five day work week, um, which sucks. So we should all blame Henry Ford for that. I don't care what he created in his model T and all that crap. Great car, great, a long standing company screwed up our work weeks. So blame Henry Ford for that. They care about making money. They don't care about winning. Um, Martha and them are bad owners, period. They have hired yep. horrible management. They have made terrible coaching decisions, aka Rod Marinelli. Yep. Um, put some put some coaches in over their heads, like Jim Schwartz. And then when they had yep. a coach who wasn't the greatest coach, but was the most successful recent coach in Jim Caldwell, after making the playoffs and not and and not having a losing record on either of his on either of his seasons, decide to fire him anyway for Matt freaking Patricia. <laughs> Matt freaking Patricia. What a disaster was that was. A complete and utter debacle. Like, it didn't even get another job yet. Is Patricia working anywhere? Because he shouldn't be. I don't. Okay. I didn't see him on the New England <laughs> sidelines. He doesn't deserve to be working anywhere, how terrible he was. Um, so, yeah, so we are, as Lions fans, have wallowed in, in pain. Matt Stafford traded, who was a quarterback for many years, traded to the Rams for their quarterback, Jared Goff, who had took them to the Super Bowl just a few years ago. Unique DNA was a little upset because we seem to trade players away and then all of a sudden they flourish on different teams and they do and win rings or win and win rings (laughs) um i'm not and i told him i'm not mad at that and i'm actually rooting for matt to win because people and the management and owners need to realize that they are the problem that it hasn't been the players it hasn't been always the talent level it has been ownership and management on why we've been so bad, and there are oh. um, there's there's a there's a amount uh, a large amount of the fan base that needs to realize that because they need to stop selling out games in Ford Field until ownership and management actually care and start doing something to perform and win football games. No arguments from me here. So I'm rooting for Matthew Stafford. I am a Matthew Stafford fan, and I am a fan of his because of the fact that he endured and stayed loyal to the Detroit Lions, even though if I was him, I'd have demanded to trade five, six, seven years ago um, and gotten the heck out of there. And if I was Megatron, I would have demanded to trade prior to then too, and I would have gotten the heck out of there. And Matt is, that's my team. Um, But I would have demanded to, to be out. And I want I want all the best for Matt Stafford. I think that this Super Bowl win, which I think they should win because I believe the Rams, top to bottom, are a better team. Um, I think this will solidify Matt in the upper echelon of quarterbacks of his era, uh, where I believe he should be. Um, there was always questions about Matt because of lack of playoff success. Um, and there was a big question mark, well, is it because he played for the Lions? His first season out of Detroit, he has his team in the Super Bowl. Obviously, the talent around him is better offensively and defensively overall, but he has played well. He has performed. He's delivered the ball fantastically. And obviously, like everyone's talking about how great Cooper Cup has been. No one was talking about Cooper Cup last year. He wasn't a top receiver last year. He's a top receiver now with Matt Stafford throwing him the football. Let's not let's not negate that. Let's not lie like Cooper Cup is the next coming of Jerry Rice. Okay. It's good, but a lot of that has to do with the guy who's getting him the football. Yeah. And Matt Stafford, to me, of everybody playing in the Super Bowl, um, Matt Stafford and Aaron Donald are tied for who deserves it the most. And as someone who used to 
live in Western, Western, Western Pennsylvania, has an affinity for the Penn Hills area, which I don't have affinity for many areas out in that, in places out in the Pittsburgh area, but I do love Penn Hills. Um, shout out to Aaron Donald, Penn Hills graduate. I hope he wins a Super Bowl and further solidifies himself in the uh, pantheon of defensive linemen and their greatness who are important keys to a Super Bowl winning team, a la the Warren Saps, Reggie Whites of the world. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Um, I do my best. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like I said, I, um, I'm just, just a little hurt, you know, just a little hurt. I mean, I, I but, wish it could be us too. Like, <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it must be nice. It must be nice. But I will say this. Um, uh, there's a friend of mine. He's a big Rams fan, always been. And uh, when the trade happened, he was like, "Yo, you know, we got we got Stafford." And I was like, "Yeah, I saw that." I was like, "He'll take you guys to the playoffs." I was like, "He might even take you to the Super Bowl." And I said that, and he was like, "Nah." And he, this is you know, the Rams are his team. And he was like, "Nah, I don't see it." And I was like, "Ah, I, I think you will." I was like, "It's just us." <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's us. I was like, he's granted, granted, he's granted. always you know he's always granted. been a good quarterback. <laughs> Nate was the one who predicted, if you recall, uh, our previous episode before the season started, that we would not win a single game this year. <laughs> that was his prediction. The I was pretty darn close. Played, the first season we played seventeen regular season games, he says we're not winning a single one. I had a little more faith and said we would win two. And somehow we won three and had a tie. So <laughs> we were both wrong. <laughs> we were wrong, but not by much. No, unfortunately, not by much, no. Um, and we came pretty darn close to not, not yeah, winning we the game. a long either. time looking like you was going to be right. Yeah, the first half of the regular season. Forget about it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not – I said that to say I respect I respect number nine, um, and you know, like I said, I, I've always thought he was a good quarterback, and we just we suck. <laughs> yeah, that that's that's more than fair. All right, um, last topic for this episode. This is a fun one since we love our anime here at the Original Geek Podcast. Dun, 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 dun. The year is now twenty twenty two. As we've stated before, on November 6th, the Sword Art Online event took place. Could we see a Sword Art Online event happen with the current state of technology and virtual reality here in 2022? (laughs) You know what? The way 2022 has started out, (laughs) nothing's impossible. Uh, it's only February. God help us. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's only February. Um, but yeah, uh, the way uh, the way a current technology, I'd say no. But we're getting pretty darn close. And I mean, come on, there's got to be somebody in Japan who has full dive technology that you know it may not be ten thousand people get stuck, but maybe maybe fifty get stuck in their <laughs> on their prototype headsets. Well, I'm already thinking. I'm thinking about uh, um, Neuralink, right? I, if you're not familiar, it's yeah. Elon Musk, uh, um, new latest venture, I guess you would call it. Yeah. Oh, the man um, when he said that, I was like, "This is how we get Sword Art Online." Right. Like, come on, like that was no, exactly I, what I was thinking about too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I, I'm about nope, 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 no. <laughs> uh, and then it, all he has to do is team up with. Uh, Meta, aka Facebook, yeah. and we're there. Um, and, and we you are know there. Zuckerberg's not 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 above uh, tapping into your minds and trapping you there for life. Yeah, yeah. Or so, so um, yeah, because I mean, th- like you know, the the one big thing of 2022, it started actually last year, but um, it's been the talks, you know, and around the tech world is the metaverse, right? Um, and so. You know, that's the, it's, we're definitely headed towards some sort of full dive technology. 
mm-hmm. um, world, um, Sword Art Online world, at some point in the near future, probably closer than we think it is. Yeah. Because um, uh, I think the last thing he, he tweeted, not the last thing he tweeted, but the last thing he tweeted about Neuralink was like, that by the end of 2022, they'll have a functioning unit or something like that. that, that um, is, well, and again, that's why I said, you know, in the timeline, <laughs> this, November right. 2022 November's, is when right. the story sort of online kicks off and everyone gets yeah. stuck. So, I mean, that fits right with the <laughs> time frame. The only, the only question then would be who would the final boss be in their, in their world? Would it be Elon? Would it be Zuckerberg? Or would it be like a, um, um, a chimera, like a, a merging of <laughs> Zuck and Elon, be the final boss on floor one hundred of the Metaverse Tower. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. Bezos might come in there and make an appearance. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. And, and Branson too. Why not throw them all in there? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think Branson would be a lower level boss. Um, but yeah. <laughs> 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 Woo! Yeah, taking him. shots at Branson. I like it. <laughs> I love. I love Branson. I love Branson. But yeah, he's just. Uh, you just said he's a his, low level boss compared well, to Bezos. I think, so Zucker here's the thing. I think the level of his, uh, I, I say the level of his morality seems to be higher than. Okay, the so other you're, ones. you were paying him a compliment. I got you. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. the other ones are like. Um, Elon, I'm I'm still not sure that he's not Lex Luthor, and um, I think I think, the, I think he has a picture of Lex Luthor hanging in his bathroom. I'm just, like, Lex and he's he's, he's like he's heavily entrenched in nerd culture. So yes, like I mean I don't know. I'm sure he knows about Lex, Lex Luthor, and he's like that's the guy that I want to be when I grow up. I, we we need to um, take, we need to start looking at his hands to see if he's wearing a kryptonite ring. Because <laughs> he might be. Yeah. Um. And Bezos, like, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Amazon. That's all. Bezos already like. looks like Lex Luthor, so I mean, yeah, he does. And then, yeah, um, if you've if you worked at Amazon and know anybody that works at Amazon, you know, um, facts. <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. And then, um, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's entirely possible. Will I be one of the one of the millions trapped? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> No, nope. I'll be waiting nope. on the outside. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, you know, I think there were no black possible. people except for a Gill in in that show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> that's a, yeah. And he was living abroad, so. And he was living abroad. <laughs> so we're like, yeah, no, no. Uh, you want me to do what and where for what? Nah, I'm good. I'll, I'll see how. Nah, I'll see how. No, no. Because he owned. Then he he owned the the pub, right? The pub, yeah, he, he owned the pub yeah. that he in the real world, yeah, yeah. So but he trapped the trap the successful brother. <laughs> well, see, in, in the, he well, he remember he met he met the wife online playing games, right? And they right. they both wanted to do it, and he was like, um, and he won like like a toss or rock paper scissors or something for that he got to try SEO out first, and yeah. he got stuck. Yeah, he should have just, just held just it down. the gentleman thing and be like ladies first, and he would have avoided all problems. Well, I'm glad he made it out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad he made it out. Too. Know, I wish usually, there was more story involving him, but I'm glad he made it out. Maybe we'll get another season and uh, I don't know another world. They would well, they better because the season three cliffhanger and getting to that cliffhanger was painful. Season three is it terrible. Was. Season um, three was terrible. It was really bad, but it dragged for so oh, long. It's it, it's just nonsensical. It didn't make any type of sense. And by the time they said something that made a little bit of sense, I no longer cared. Yeah, I was I was very I was thoroughly. I wish they would have ended it after after season one. Season one was amazing. Yes, season yes. two. Season two did a good job of the ca- first, keeping the it. First half of season first two. half, yeah. yeah. Um, they get it. They did a good job of keeping it going in, in the first half, but after that, it was just like it was kind of downhill from there. Yeah, that second and, half, um, the whole thing with the the you know the the terminally ill girl and all that, like yeah. that that was just. Eh. 
yeah, it was. Yeah, it wasn't. It, 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 was, it wasn't. It, it wasn't terrible, but it was just. It was just meh. Yeah, it didn't pull you in like like the first season. It pulled me in where yes. I was like, I felt for these people, these characters. Yeah. You you can imagine like, like how how would I react in that situation? You know, um, how would I? You know, how would I test? You know, and react when loyalties are tested and yeah. Um, you know, and, and, I know, I, and then I realized that I'm actually killing real people. Right. I, I know what the consequences are. Or even if I even if I'm not sure if the consequence is real because I don't have any empirical proof of it, just the 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 strong possibility that it's is true, like that, you know, you have to that weighs on someone's conscience and then you have that people out there who didn't care and didn't believe in going out freely willy nilly killing people and you right. got to try to survive that the player then, killers right you your player killers and then you had it is it's, it's wild is that after the first like two episodes um the, the story shifts from the first couple months into two years later and most people have given up they're just yeah. resigned to living on a particular floor and just yeah. you know, living out a life as normal as they Surviving. can possibly can, you know, yeah. going fishing and, and 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 opening running shops and like they're not, you know, they mentioned how small the assault team is trying to clear the game. Like it's not many people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was very compelling. The whole story was very compelling. Yeah, and then after them. that story, it but just, then after that, yeah, it was like. It was cool to see them, like you know, in the real world and and living, living, kind of continuing their lives that they had in their bonds that they had formed in the game. Absolutely. Um, and you and, and you and, and that makes sense. You you know, you have a bunch of people that you had near death experiences with yeah, shared trauma. Shared trauma. You're you're gonna you're gonna cling to those people. Absolutely. Um, yeah. What's unfortunate is that it makes you know it's like Kirito and his harem. Plus Klein, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's essentially what it is. Because they're all they're, they're all pining for him, is, is including his cousin, um, which of course is weird. Um, it's anime, of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's anime, but it, it's still weird. Uh, <laughs> I mean it's that's what it is. It's Kirito and his harem of girls who all have a crush on him. And Klein, and Klein, who wished they had a crush and on Klein, them. who's who's a grown man, who's twenty four, and wishes all these girls had. Actually, no, he's twenty six, because he was twenty four to start of yeah. Sao. So he's twenty six years old, wishing all these high school girls had a crush on him, which is also weird. Uh, also again, weird. It's also anime. Also anime. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. this is an anime. This is the original Jig podcast, and. Smooth that transition is going to close our episode, except for this. Here's the original G podcast. Um, we appreciate those who came before us, those who blazed the trail that we try to walk upon. And this Black History Month, not just because it's Black History Month, but this being the first episode Unique DNA have been able to get back together to do. It would not be right if we did not give a rest in peace and a thank you to the late great Sidney Portier. Um who was so impactful to black cinema. Um, if you haven't seen any of his movies, I recommend watching In the Heat of the Night. I recommend, um, above all, watch that one uh, for, for sure. Um, I recommend watching um, Uptown Saturday the Night with him and Bill Cosby for, for an enjoyable, funny experience in, in the Heat of the Night for a more serious experience. And then, of course, there is the ever controversial guess who's coming to dinner with Cindy Portier. <laughs> Three movies I highly recommend you watch for of the great late late great Cindy Portier, um, Oscar winner, humanitarian, civil rights activist, all around talented man, passed away at the age of I believe it was ninety two in January. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Sydney. For everything you've done, the the wonderful book you read, you wrote that I have on my shelf right now, um, and the impact you've had on in, in our lives. Thank you. Yes. And with that, we bid you all adieu on this episode 
Again, I'm your host, Rocky Mr. Magic. He's Unique DNA, and we want to thank you for listening, and we could not possibly do this show. Now, without you, Jinx, who continue to support us, whether we are actively recording all the time or not, and we thank you for your continued support. Please rate and review the show on your podcasting app of choice. We prefer Apple po- we prefer Apple Podcast reviews, but if you leave us a review on Google, um, Podchaser, Spotify, Stitcher, Castbox, and others, we are greatly appreciative of those as well. If you can't find us on all, any of those aforementioned podcast platforms, let us know. Uh, you can email us jignation at gmail dot com or message us on Facebook at jignation. And until next time. Peace. Are you ready? Oh. Ready to make an entrance so back with uh. Come on, clap for me. Oh, yeah. Whoa, slow down. Uh. 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 Whoa, speed up. This is DJ What, and you're listening to the original Jeek Podcast. Yeah, hi. Hello. Hello. How are you Hello. Doing? Hello. Good. Good. Good? Yeah. Looks like you're having fun with your daddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>